Welcome to Enhancing Dos Doom series. In this episode, we will take a look at the code execution. What it takes to run a custom code without modifying the original exe file. Now, there are many bugs that allow code execution, we just have to pick one. This is a bug in configuration file parsing. This function is responsible for loading option name and option value from the file. This loads option name with a limit of 79 characters into a buffer that is big enough, but this loads option value without any limit into a buffer that is only 100 bytes long. These variables are on the stack so we might be able to override them, that is not important though. Do you know what else is on the stack? The return address from this function. If we override that value, we can jump wherever we want. Let's try it then. I will just create a bad config file with a very long option name and if we run it, yep, it froze. We want to see which part of config file overwrote which registers, so I will keep 100 A's and change the rest like that. 4 bytes are one register, this should allow us to see what has changed. Now we need access to a debugger or something like that. I have a special code that allows me to see all the registers. Well, we have changed one register, and it crashes at this location, which is not what we want. According to a disassembly, this is what causes the crash. We overwrote the file pointer, this tries to check if the file ended. Now, 57 hex is a character w, so we have found one important location. We will deal with this crash later, let's skip it for now. There we go, we have changed return address and the CPU tried to run the code from this location, which is invalid. And other registers are changed too, we control almost all of them. Now we know the location of return address in the text file, so we can change it to almost anything. Almost. We are still in a single line of a text file, certain characters cannot be used. Cool, where do we want to jump at? Preferably to our custom code which can be part of our long text. If we change the target to the address of our code, except we have no idea where our code is at. Welcome to randomized memory layout. Yes, even location of game code and data is randomized. I can think only of a single area which is fixed on those PCs capable of running Doom. VGA RAM. Let's use video memory. There's just a tiny issue, we didn't put any code there. As you can see, the video memory is guaranteed to contain this text screen as it is always generated by the game. The text is actually a grid of 80 by 25 characters. Each character consists of two bytes. First byte is character from ASCII table and second byte are color attributes. 07 is a black background and gray text. 74 is gray background and red text. Now, we are looking for this instruction. This will jump to our code. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. These are not even ordinary characters. We have a bit of control over a few characters, but only characters, not colors. Also, it would force people to use specific characters in their what file. So, no, I'm not gonna do that. Is it possible that any of existing text happens to be any useful instruction? Why yes, it is. Since we have a control over those registers, this is very useful. Here's a pseudocode. Basically, it allows us to write any value anywhere we want. If we can't find our instruction, let's just create it right after this one. This is pretty lucky and it will work. I have one extra concern. I would like if this could also work in shareware, but like this it won't, everything is shifted. It is the same instruction and the same trick could be used, so how does it look in full version? Quite nice actually, this extra instruction is conditional jump and this condition is never met, it does nothing, what a luck. Well, we will overwrite part of this opcode, but that does not matter as this instruction was just executed. Nice, we have a self-modifying code in video memory to enhance DOS Doom. Sounds about right. 
So let's try it. Instead of messing with the text file, I have created assembly code for this. This is a part I have just explained. This is a pointer to fake file. I have set it to video memory too. This is our return address and those are registers. Finally, this is the code we will be running. Just undefined instruction. And it totally works. It crashed on the invalid opcode and here you can see modified video memory. Ok, let's add the extra instructions to actually prove we are running our code. This code will extract code and database addresses. Yep, it works. Illegal instruction again, but ESI is address of code base and EDI is address of database. Now let me show how to run a function from the game. We have to take base address of code and add offset of printf function to it, so we can call it indirectly. And I have replaced undefined opcode with exit to dos syscall. There, nice. And lucky. Since we have our code in a single line of text file, we cannot use specific characters. It just so happens that this code doesn't use those. Ok, last modification. I have turned it into a valid WAT file and added loader. The loader will try to find allocate memory for and read ace code from this WAT file. And of course run it. This is great as this loaded code has no character limitation anymore. Here's an example ace code included. It is a valid WAT file and a config file at the same time. As long as you don't get one specific character in what header, you can combine it with any mod. But it has to be loaded as a config file. Does it work on a real hardware? Yes, it does. That's it for now. In the next episode, we will run a code written in C and take a look at function hooking. That will allow us to modify a behavior of the game.